All this is Dr. Mubeen Sayed from drmubeen.com. Welcome to one more show. This is a chit chat. So once again, announcement for tomorrow. Tomorrow morning, 9 a.m. Pacific time, we'll have Dr. Paul Merrick with us. And then in the evening, 6 p.m., we'll have Steve Kirsch with us. And uh, with this, let's start. Doug, you had a question with the la last chit chat, which I really don't have a good answer to that. And I'm just going to give my conjecture, and I may be totally wrong. The reason that first dose is less um, infections versus second two doses are, in my opinion, two. Number one, folks who have received two doses are the ones who were um, prioritized first, and they are the ones who were more at risk. So folks who are more at risk have still a higher risk of infection, relatively higher compared to the others. So that is one possibility. The second possibility is the um, the carelessness, as Christine was saying as well, uh, that when people become uh, vaccinated with two doses, sometimes they let their guard down. So maybe that is also an, uh, a reason. So Doug, as I just explained, that it seems like higher risk is part of two doses because they must have been given the two doses together. Or, or earlier. Chantal says, morning, Dr. Bean from Australia. Good morning, how are you? Uh, big day tomorrow. Yes, we'll have Dr. Paul Marek. We'll have Dr. Tess Laurie very soon as well. And then I have a number of other doctors who I would announce who are also uh, joining us. It is interesting that we have shifted from a position where when I would invite someone, there will be less people who would say we'll come in to a point where now folks are reaching out to say, and not Dr. Paul Merrick. Dr. Paul Merrick is someone I keep knocking at his door to say, come in. But folks are reaching out to say, can we be on your show? So this is the difference. And uh, we are fortunate that our group has been just very consistently, continuously working together, and we have been noticed. And it is actually good because this, the the thoughts that the guests bring are value for the cool beans. <laughs> Christine is saying all the celebrity beans are showing up. Correct, correct. And there are a lot more celebrity beans now. Gold Country does. What is your opinion of the Oxford Ivermectin trial parameters? I have to look into that. So I saw some Twitter discussions that were happening. Uh, I have to look into that and respond. Um, is Jana here? So Roman is saying, Jana Taylor, what's up? So hopefully Jana is here, and hopefully here, here she is. So Jana Taylor, hello, how are you doing? Hope you are you are healthy. We have all been missing you and praying for you for a long time. Um, Abhinav says, in regards to peripheral cytokines potentially causing tinnitus, does messenger RNA vaccine contains more of these or other types? Can you please throw some light on? So <clears throat> I don't think it's about the vaccine. I think it's about the body's response. That is why you would hear sometimes hear from the cool beans that the dose may need to be calibrated. So I think it is a fair thing to say Dose should be calibrated with the body mass, body uh, body size. Similarly, with the person's history, with the person's allergies, and it has to be kind of figured out that way. That all is out of the window at this time. So everybody's just given the same dose. So it is really body's response more than the vaccine itself. I have, uh, I'm, I'm talking with people with all kinds of vaccines in the US who have tinnitus. <laughs> Tika says, Dr. B. Novelas, you're the best and give me hope and keep my anxiety down. Thank you. You're very welcome. That was the basic idea to be able to study together in for these things so that we are less anxious, or at least we know what 
can we do? What are the controls that we have? And what are the things that are out of our control? Sarah says, what medicine and supplements did you or would you take with the knowledge today, pre-vaccination by BioNTech and for how long? BioNTech, Pfizer BioNTech. So that is messenger RNA. So I took, I had Moderna and again, I had no choice. We went there and they said Moderna. Um, so the things that I was doing, I did not know which vaccine, but the things that I was doing, I was very much up on vitamin D. At some point I felt that I had skipped a few and I became sick and I thought that was my punishment. Vitamin D, I was taking 10 to 20,000 international units daily. I was on vitamin C on a multivitamin daily so I can get just general as well. Calcium, vitamin K2, magnesium at a different time than calcium and vitamin D. NAC, but not this flush NAC, NAC regular, glutathione, CoQ10. These were generally the ones. I remember once I tweeted the picture of everything and somebody said, do you rattle <laughs> because you take so many of these things? In addition to that, I was taking ivermectin on weekly basis, one full dose. When I went for the vaccination, I took anti-allergies, I took anti-inflammatory. Even then for two weeks, it was just so much of a punishment because my jaw would not open and I could not eat well. I could not do these, these talks very well. Uh, so this is what I took. I do not know if that helped or that did not help, but at least my symptoms only lasted two days in both cases, first dose and second dose. My wife was very much up with the supplements. She did not take much ivermectin, but supplements, anti-allergy, anti-inflammatory, she was taking. Even then, she had 90 days long um, side effects and, and issues, but that was Johnson & Johnson. Fortunately, she is recovered fully, I'm happy, but she, even with these things, she continued on suffering for 90 days. Trillium says, I still have a problem with the CDC using mantra benefits outweigh the risk when they are so behind on researching and providing numbers, thoughts. So very, very correct. I think cool beans know that I have always said that vaccines are the correct path, at least for myself. CDC's behavior makes me so angry. Their latest decision about children makes me so angry that first they just on Juneteenth, they just said, you know what, we'll meet next week. And that told me that they actually didn't have a plan other than saying, hey, risk benefit, benefits are more. If they had a plan to protect more, then they would have canceled everything and talked about it and said, this is emergency, all hands on deck, listen to us now to start pr protecting. So I don't think that they really were capable of thinking to protect. I don't see this to be a deliberate criminality. I think this is just so indifference, ego, and a mixture of everybody else is just stupid. We know what we are doing type of a behavior that they think this was the right approach. So there is a question. Jesus Christ says, Dr. Bean Medical Lectures, can you diagnose inflammation of the spinal cord or demyelination with an X-ray? Um, there would be more things needed than the X-ray. But normally more than the X-ray, the doctor should be able to diagnose from the clinical picture. <laughs> Linda says, Dr. Bean, you're waking up. Um, it's not about waking up. It's just that I'm becoming more angry for their indifference. And that indifference, I've been talking about it for a year now. It just, it makes me angry that there are, 
those things that are out of our control, out of all of our control, fine, we can't do anything about it. I do not know if I get the infection today, will I develop a cytokine storm and die or not? This is out of everybody's control so far. Maybe tomorrow we'll know genetically who is predisposed and we'll have mechanisms against that. But the protection with a protocol for how to do the vaccination and if the vaccination of a certain type is done, then what should be the protocol to manage? Then what group, what gender should not have which vaccine? What is their choice? This simple, I think it would have been one paper, one page pamphlet that on one side said, if you are 30 years and younger, don't take messenger RNA. Or for the doctor, a pamphlet to say, if you've given this vaccine, if you've given this vaccine to 30 years and younger, here is how to monitor and manage them. Similarly, if you're younger than 50 years and woman, don't take adenovirus. And here are your choices. That was an easy thing to do. And they didn't do it. That is what makes me angry that preventable things are not prevented. This is the same thing that happened with UK as well. When the clotting started occurring, and I said this is because of vaccine, I still remember that was the worst time when folks who had been with me for a year turned on me and they just started hammering me to say, why did you say that AstraZeneca or Oxford's vaccine could cause clotting? And I was right. And I talked about how to manage it. So it was important as a medical doctor to talk about the management. So that is the part which I think CDCs are missing, that they have to act like doctors to say, here is how to manage this situation instead of saying, oh, well, sorry, this just happens. Ashley says, with bromelain help with inflammatory cytokine storm if my doctor won't prescribe fluvoxamine? Bromelain is fine. Any other anti-inflammatory? So again, I do not know. Cytokine storm needs management in ICU. There is nothing over the counter that could prevent or manage cytokine storm. However, uh, there is early aggressive treatment of the COVID to prevent from entering the cytokine storm. And that we know ivermectin-like things and anti-inflammatory and supplements. Same thing for the vaccine as well. So Giladoni says, question, Giladoni, I see you after a long time. And cool beans, been away due to studying for exam. Good luck for your exams. Did you discuss the vaccine in young people, reproductive health? Yes, so I had done a discussion about uh, vaccine and irregular periods, and so plus vaccines and the tes testicular damage. So if you can, uh, or COVID and testicular damage, both of them actually can be applied to infection or the vaccine. So please look at those. Dani Brantley says, now they're saying people who got JNJ should get a messenger RNA as a booster thoughts. So the re reason that they're saying is that JNJ vaccination or the efficacy was a little low. But if I, again, I'll tell you about myself. I would not want my, my wife now to go get one more vaccine shot. She already suffered for 90 days. And um, again, at the end of the day, it is her decision. But when I will provide my feedback, I would tell her that, hey, don't. John says, does messenger RNA vaccine affect male fertility? No. And I have done this discussion two times. There are two videos. Srinivas says, Dr. Bean, how likely that vaccinated people can get cardiomyopathy in the future? Is there any cases reported so far? Which type of vaccine will likely get the cardiomyopathy to occur? So look, it's a very simple thing to uh, understand the time. We know 
Let me share my screen. We know that the vaccine generated antibodies. So let's say dose one. We know that the antibodies would start getting produced anywhere from fifth day to 27th day, mean ninth day. And now antibodies IgG, IgM will go up. IgG goes up at the same time. Then IgM goes down in a few weeks. IgG continues on for two to three months, and then it goes down. So now let's say if somebody is going to develop some vaccine or COVID infection related antibody related issue, for example, uh, pericarditis or myocarditis, then that would happen during this time. And most probably the peak will be in the early time. So five days to 17 days actually five days to 17 days are the most vulnerable days. Ninth day is the, the median. That means 50% of the folks who would have an, an issue of clotting or pericarditis will have it by the ninth day. So if you say that, hey, after three months, after four months, it has to be very difficult. Again, everybody's immune system is different, but it's going to be really difficult to say fifth month or sixth month vaccine is causing pericarditis or myocarditis. So Moorhouse Joplin says, why is Fee Jalali's Twitter now private, do you know? So that is actually strange for me as well. I'm going to invite him once more. I was trying to retweet some of his tweets, and I could not retweet. The retweet button was disabled. So I look. it looks like Twitter is punishing him. Just like my videos, I've stopped uh, broadcasting to Twitter, Periscope, but sometimes I still add it. And as soon as I do the video, they take it down. Jody says, US Army found myocarditis happens within the first three days. So. If you think about it, if this happens within the first three days, that means it is less possible with the antibodies and is more something else. For example, folks have been saying, hey, it is the, the spikes that go to the heart. So I, I doubt that. But still, if it is the first three days, let's say, in the first three days in normal most of the people, by normal, I don't mean that the ones who are working are abnormal. I'm, I'm going to explain that. In, in not previously infected people, three days is not sufficient to make antibodies. But if somebody was previously infected and has become asymptomatically recovered, then as soon as you give them the dose, they would start making within 24 to 48 hours, they'll start making antibodies. So it is possible that those who had infection before and got the vaccine that triggered the antibody production to be fast or quickly, and that caused the uh, action on heart. Now, I may be totally wrong here by saying it is antibody related. Imagine if it is actually spike proteins. For some reason, spike proteins are the ones that are in the blood and in the heart. Then as soon as the vaccine is given, this can happen. <laughs> Roller girl says silly Twitter. Yes. So Day Mag Toto says, is the SARS-CoV-2 virus sensitive to gastric acids and intestinal enzymes? No. So this is the 15 months ago discussion. The SARS-CoV-2 and other coronaviruses, they have these spikes and other lipid uh, things on them that protect them from gastric acids. This is why coronaviruses are enveloped viruses, meaning they have a membrane outside and then they have those lipids and stuff. 
that can cause gastroenteritis. On the other hand, many other enveloped viruses cannot sustain themselves in the gastric uh, acids because they don't have these lipids around them to protect them. So this is a enveloped virus which can sustain and survive in the gastrointestinal tract and cause infection there. Arun says, what is the treatment for myocarditis? So it depends, but generally steroids are given, antibodies are given to, uh, if there is, let's say, antibody to the heart, then antibodies are given, then uh, supportive therapy is given, oxygen may be needed, cardiac support may be needed. So it really depends upon what is what are the labs like. So generally, heart is, is just like, let's say there is an injury to the heart and uh, finger, and the finger is swollen. Now you need to kind of give it a rest, plus you need to give uh, anti-inflammatory. That is the kind of thing you do, but you cannot give a rest to heart. So you have to reduce the load on heart, keep the body supported, and keep the anti-inflammatories going. Sanjeev says, good morning, my friend, after two months of vaccination, have no titers of antibodies. What is your recommendation? So there are many people who do not develop antibodies or, or their antibodies develop and go away. Do a T detect test. Look at the T cell test and see what is happening. Not having antibodies does not necessarily mean that they did not respond. I mean, I'm talking about healthy person. So Michelle says, shedding, are non-jabbed at risk? No. Neither do the people uh, shed spikes or the virus any different than vaccinated or unvaccinated. Unvaccinated folks, when they get infection, they may continue to shed for a longer period of time because they're going to go through the infection. Vaccinated may shed for 10 hours, 15 hours, the virus itself, and then they would stop. Vaccinated will not shed spikes. So that is just not uh, a correct thing. Aditya says, can severe COVID cause pancreatitis and eventually lead to abscess formation in liver and collection in peripancreatitis? Yes. So severe COVID can cause inflammation of many of the tissues. Actually, SARS-CoV-1, they did a test study on people after 10 years, and they found out that some people had developed diabetes earlier than their age group fellows. And the reason was that SARS-CoV-1 had caused damage to their pancreas, destroyed some of their cells, the remaining cells, we as we are going through the time, our beta cell continue to get reduced. So they already got a hit by the virus and then the remaining cells reduced to a point of diabetes earlier. So yes, this can happen. Skyfrog says, I see variant ETA death rate is high. Do you have any info on this one? So I saw that in their report as well. I did not pay much attention to that yet because that has a very low uh, prevalence yet. So if you see here, um, if I open up cases with specimen date in past 28 days, so that is, this was 21st June. So let's say May 20th onwards. The Delta variant was 83%. Eta was lesser than 50 was 2.2% and greater than 50 was negligible, although it did cause this 5.2% deaths. I do not know how did, so six over here. So the, the number is still only 116. So out of those 116, the death rate seems to be high but we have to look at it a little more. And again, I'm, I'm reserving this uh, comment because they say over here that please don't make this comparison yet. We do not have sufficient data. 
<laughs> Luis Grande says, did you see the Oxford sy systemic review released yesterday? Not recommending. Is, it, is this something new? I don't even. So look, one fortunate thing for me compared to many others, those who are not physicians or those who are physicians and do not use ivermectin. My benefit is that I have used ivermectin in my patients and, and to good benefit. So let's say at the end of all of this, we say that this all was just a placebo effect. Then my patients were, and I was very lucky, that even if out of 100, let's say there is a possibility of one person dying, I didn't even have that. And so we just lucked out all of us. And maybe that placebo effect of ivermectin was very useful. So the point is, these folks can say what they want to. I don't believe in three days therapy, two days therapy. You have seen my therapies in which if I notice that somebody has infection, I just continue with ivermectin till they recover. And I have most of the time, Folks who I managed were those who were in trouble because they were um, either old age or had comorbidities. Their children were doctors and they reached out to me because they thought they now could not manage them anymore. And so then they reached out. So because of, I've seen the benefit, I don't need an RCT. So the folks who are going after the RCTs, these are the information and misinformations for them. I think for us, we know where the truth sits. <laughs> this is a good one. Where is the Greek letter conversion chart? So I think we'll have to, we'll have to see that somewhere. I actually. Doug, I actually did a Google lookup to say, okay, what are all these symbols? Although I remember we used to study them. <laughs> George says, Omega is the last letter. Hopefully by then we, we are out, hopefully, and I pray that as well. Otherwise, they'll just start putting numbers after these uh, symbols. Mr. Krill says, I'm, I am Dr. Chest Physician from Iraq. I'm now I'm seeing thousands of patients. Good luck to you and your patients. I hope you are doing good. They are doing good. Uh, Arun says, all medicines are metabolized in liver. Do you think medicines for removing metabolites on liver should be given after severity of illness? Many, majority of the vaccine uh, medicines are activated or deactivated by the liver. So liver is involved in majority of them. But there are still medicines that are either excreted by renal system or some by even sweat or saliva or other secretions, but majority with the liver. So liver and kidneys partnership mostly. Now, the second part of your question, do you think medicines for removing metabolites from liver should be given after severity of illness ends? Ideally, liver can take care of those things by themselves, but we can give enzyme inducers if need be. And Jeridoni, thank you very much for your super chat. Um, if France was here, is Texas here? Somebody would do it. We... <laughs> <laughs> Our patron says, soon run out of Greek alphabets and then we use Cyrillic. Is it Cyrillic and Sanskrit? So Annie says, please talk about how AstraZeneca followed by Pfizer shot would react in body. So UK did a mix and match. It is actually a good thing that for women under 50 years of age, if they were given AstraZeneca, it is good to move to Pfizer. And they did the uh, 
test of this mix and match, they saw that the immunity developed was fine, robust, but side effects were a little more than if it was homogeneous vaccines. And I, I did that discussion. <laughs> Barbara says, Texas, yes, Texas Meg is here. Why died bushy tailed and sassy as usual? Love it. Thank you. So um, there, <laughs> Sky Frog did we, Carolyn did we, uh, Bushes did we. Thank you very much. Um, so yesterday, there was some cat that was outside and that came in and that sat down in the window and both Kyrie and and uh, Luffy just went crazy. And they made some strange noises that I had to go come down and see what's going on. And it looked like they were <laughs> they were fighting with that cat from inside. OK to let go says, why did you take the mag at a separate time from calcium? I have a supplement which combines. Usually they say that magnesium and calcium and K2 and uh, vitamin D giving magnesium with them interferes with the absorption. So this is separated out. If you're taking it together, that is fine as well. Jody says, Dr. Bean, do you think this data shows Delta less deadly in general or because of vaccines? How about death rate comparisons with Alpha and Delta in India? So how about, I mean, knowing this caveat that we should not do this comparison because the data is kind of not fully available or baked. But still, if we see here, uh, alpha greater than 50, 4.8, beta greater than 50, 4.2. But the number of cases, please see, number of cases, 165. We are comparing this to something with the 100 and, uh, or 32,000 cases or 82,000 cases. So 165 with 82,000 is not the right comparison. But let's do that knowing to be aware with this caveat. So beta, 4.2%. Then if you see eta, as Doug was saying, 5.2%, greater than 50. And then gamma, kappa, theta. And so here, the most dangerous one seems to be eta but in the last 28 days the total cases of eta are just six compared to 71000 with delta under uh, under 50 and 8000 over 50 which may be less because number one the number of people over 50 are lesser 22 million versus 40 million and number two they are mostly vaccinated Roman says, Dr. Bean Medical Lectures, any insight or studies on ivermectin and its side effects on the gut microbiome? Thank you. I have not looked into it, but I'm sure that there are. So I was actually thinking of switching now from this discussion back towards ivermectin and looking at some studies because Dr. Teslari is about to join us as well. So I wanted to make sure we refresh ourselves on that side. So I'll look into that. TDK rises 12 says, how do I get my doctor to prescribe me ivermectin and the other drugs recommended by the FLCCC in India? Most doctors here are don't here don't even know. Do you need them to prescribe? I thought that even over the counter medicines are available. If not, then show them if you go to FLCCC site, there's a link that says take following information to your doctor. The problem with what I'm seeing is doctors become very upset about it. They become very arrogant. They become very unhappy. And so there is a there is a continuous battle. And we know that even in the US, it's not just India. Even here, sometimes giving administering ivermectin means going to court. It's just, just so strange. So Jesus Christ says, ivermectin ruins the microbiota like antibiotics. Does this mean that it could hurt our immunity? No. So who said that? Look, microbiota 
is not going to be destroyed by ivermectin. Ivermectin's role for worm is very different. Now, if we take its role inside the gut with the pathogens, it does not attack the pathogens directly. It gets into our cells and blocks the cells from responding to pathogen, for example, the virus, with a very specific function, and that is to go after RDRP, which is in some viruses only, and then to go after three chymotrypsin like protease, which is also in some viruses only, and using our importing alpha and beta, which is not used by majority of the pathogens. So ivermectin is not going to ruin the microbiota. It, it does cause a GIT disturbance because of the motility and other issues on the cells. That disturbance in turn could cause, let's say, diarrhea, which can then change the microbiota. But ivermectin doesn't directly affect them. So S. Hamid says, Dr. Bean, ever since getting my first Pfizer shot, I've experienced blocked sinuses and loss of taste. Is it common? Not common, but um, again, without uh, asking you for any advice or offering you any advice, in theory, all those patients, not in theory, all those patients that I have managed, whenever they develop anosmia for whatever reason with the COVID-related vaccine or COVID, I give them high dose ivermectin for two to three days and they recover. 0 0.3 milligram per kilogram body weight is what I give them. And two, three days later, they say all good. Algebra Lorraine says, how is India doing now? So let's see. I think India is doing much better than where it was before so 30 million total cases look at this so this ramp down is actually still continuing to be down it's not that they have a third wave and they have gone down from 400,000 a day to 37,000. So more than 10, 11 times the reduction, which is awesome. Active cases are now 579,000. They had this kind of a number in March 30, 2021, this year. And then they had this kind of a number somewhere in last November as well. And the death rate is also reduced. So I think they are doing fine. And I think this is a lot to do with people's behavior and ivermectin. Kimberly says, thank you so much for a great explanation on different COVID subjects. Your examples are very useful when talking to my telehealth patients, and I often refer them to your site. Thank you very much. So thank you very much for practicing and learning and saving. Um, hopefully, you're also seeing the results that are more people saved uh, with these therapies. So day... Toto says, can there be worse than Delta or is it the worst short of a worst sort of a new strain? Look, after SARS-CoV-1, there was SARS-CoV-2. There was also MERS-CoV. So if, if we say, can there be another virus that can be dangerous? Yes. Can SARS-CoV-2 become SARS-CoV-3? Yes. Uh, will it take some time to uh, change? Yes. Uh, it is It is not changing that fast to say it is uh, dangerous. The reason it is changing apparently fast is that it has 7 billion people available for it to change. And everybody it goes to, it is mutating in there. People continue to say this is somehow to do with the vaccines. And that is because of, unfortunately, some folks 
who have peddled such conspiracies, um, everybody who gets a virus, the virus is going to mutate in them. Then some viruses are going to get out of them, which would be variants. And next, strain.org is looking at variants from the day one. So can we guarantee that this is it? No. There can be more changes. Now, would those changes be more dangerous? The virus has to strike a balance to keep us alive while spreading. If it just keeps killing us, then if you go to an extreme, how many of us it can kill all of us? Then where would it go? And it cannot do killing of all of us successfully because when it goes to a house, let's say, and it makes a, it is contagious and it is lethal, it's going to kill everybody right there. Then how would it get out of that house? So because of this, it has to have a balance. Skyfrog says Thailand, Thailand is doing terribly. So let's see. Hmm. Alexa, what is the population of Thailand? In 2020, the population of Thailand was 69.8 million people. So 69, 70 million, like UK. So the total cases they have are much, much less, but still they have this wave. So they started in April. So before that, they were kind of nothing. And then in April, they got stuck with this situation. And now they are, yeah, they're doubling. Yeah. Number of deaths are increasing too. Still, fortunately, not as bad as similar population other countries. But yes, for their own um, metric, they are doing badly. Did I actually share that screen or not? If I did not, let me just very quickly show you. This was the screen. Here is the wave and here is the death rate. Ambassador Scorpio says, what would you say is the true rate of free infections if there is any? It's a very interesting topic, and we've talked about it before as well. If we just talk about virus landing in our mouth and nose or eyes once more, then infected person or vaccinated person or uninfected person, unvaccinated person, we are all equal targets for the virus to land in us. Then our immune system, if we were infected before and recovered or vaccinated, our immune system is going to take some time to become aware and respond, respond in a more specific way. And that would take anywhere from 24 hours to 48 hours. During that time, Virus is going to sit in our body, in our throats, and replicate and infect. And if it is a contagious virus, it is a fast-moving virus, then it's going to do more damage than a slow-moving strain of it or variant of it. That is a reinfection. Now, CDCs, if this happens in infect infected person or vaccinated, they call them breakthrough. For me, really, reinfection is not a problem. It would happen in almost all of us. It can happen in all of us. It is the disease that should be measured. Just like with the COVID, we should measure hospitalizations and deaths. Similarly, with the reinfection, instead of simply saying positive RNA or not, we should think about symptomatic illnesses occurring again and people hospitalized and death. That is where the real reinfection with the damage occurred. Otherwise, reinfections would continue to occur. So what? We can't stop 
I can't say I am vaccinated, so now virus is not allowed to arrive in my mouth or land in my mouth or nose. I can't. Same is the case with the with the already infected and recovered. Now, if you talk about reinfection and redefine it as causing symptoms, then again in the vaccinated, it is less symptoms, less severity of the sim symptom. In infected and convalesced or recovered, also less symptoms and less severity. Actually, I have shared studies that showed that infection has a robust efficacy even more than the vaccine. The only thing is, please don't go out to get infection because it can kill as well. Stephen Hall says, is it possible vaccines targeting spike protein could cause COVID to mutate to be more dangerous over the next few years? Not vaccines. Can another animal coronavirus jump again into humans? That is possible. Can this SARS-CoV-2 jump into some animal? We have now billions of people getting infected, or hundreds and millions. So yes. And then from that animal, could it jump back into us after some mutations in there? Yes. So can this become a problem again and again for us? Yes. But it's nothing to do with the vaccine itself. That part of the narrative is just extra attachment to the sentence. Generally, this can happen. And there is an example, SARS-CoV-1, MERS-CoV, then SARS-CoV-2. Jessica says, what form of zinc should we take um, for efficacy? I do not know. I usually just take the elemental zinc and the specific. Uh, I take over-the-counter zinc supplements. So if somebody here in the cool beans know a better way of the zinc, then please tell us. Algebra Lorene says, could COVID be following FARS law? So I have to look up FARS law. Ours law COVID 19. FARS law is a law formulated by Dr. William Farr when he made the observation that epidemic events rise and fall in a roughly symmetrical pattern. The time evolution behavior could be captured by a single mathematical formula that could be approximated to a bell shaped curve, which we are seeing in all cases. Interesting. So I think it is it is uh, following that pattern in many of the cases we are seeing. But I need to read this a little more to understand in the bigger picture what do they mean. Jesus Christ says, if you quickly look up anti-parasitic and antibiotics, you will see that diversity of microbiota is significantly reduced, which has an impact on the immunity of the host. Totally agreed. Are you saying reduced because of ivermectin? OK, going into the bunker. <laughs> Meerkat, why are you going into the bunker? OK. Uh, J.H. Farrell says, we better pray, because it sounds like we are out of answer here in his word, he says, my name is, OK, so some other discussion is going on. Uh, DLC drummer says, after I'm done taking ivermectin for long haul and still not better, what determines taking fluvoxamine or prednisolone? So um, if ivermectin is not helping, then I think that the next thing is to add, again, not an advice for you. I'm just talking about the long haul protocol. Uh, next thing is to add steroid and fluvoxamine. If that doesn't help either, then one can take them away and start the MCAS management or mass or, or the um, macrophage activation syndrome management. GG says, what if I get COVID between Pfizer doses and recover? Skip second, will PCR detect COVID in between shots? 
So COVID is the second dose and it is the, the biggest dose possible. So after that, I do not see what is the next need for the next dose. That is one that again, my opinion, there are doctors who are just peddling that one should continue to take the second dose, but dose for what? You just have the infection and you managed it. Now, why do you need a vaccine? And then uh, will PCR detect COVID in between shots? So yes, COVID simply means the presence of the mRNA. So if it is there and if the infection is there, you're going to catch it. The only thing is it may not be there for a longer period of time because if the immune system is ready, it's going to attack it and try to clear it out faster. But in I think in the first couple of days, one could have a positive mRNA. Mohammed bin Shahida says, some health officials in Australia based on CCTV video said, based on CCTV video said 10 to 15 second exposure are enough to be infected rather than the usual 15 minutes. Maybe because of the newer, faster variants now. I think it would depend upon the load as well. <laughs> So Nick, I see your question. I cannot answer that. Nick says, is it OK taking my dog's ivermectin worming tablets as doctors won't prescribe? It's just so sad that we have made our beautiful societies come to this point. So I just answered this one. What else do we have? M MSNBC says, if one needs to go for a medical test and will dose with ivermectin to protect, how many days for ivermectin to be effective? Two days of treatment or two weeks or more of ivermectin before going out. Um, I would start it about a week before and then take two doses, one day one and day Two again, not an advice, but this is the structure, and then weekly. So, Joel, thank you for the super chat. Could delay second vax, lesser side effects and um, after effects. So, the UK's studies have shown that UK uh, increases the time between them. It has not reduced the side effects a lot. Jesus guy says reduced because of antiparasitics period, which include ivermectin because of antiparasitic. Just curious. So the antiparasitic, I do not still catch it. So are we talking about the normal flora of bacteria? If that is the case, then uh, antiparasitic is not applicable for them. But if ivermectin is going to cause GIT disturbance, which would cause more fluids to be ejected, that would wash out some of the flora as well, but not a lot. So uh, I'm sorry, I'm not able to catch it. But if you feel that, hey, this is for you, uh, this does not make sense, then don't take it. So nobody is uh, pushing anyone here. Giladoni says, does the severity of COVID indicate the antibodies or T cell response? Severity of COVID indicate the antibodies. Or so this is a very good question. So far, the cytokine storm occurs when the antibody side or the T helper 2 pathway or the humeral pathway is more active. They have seen majority of the people with better innate arm or better T helper 1 pathway actually responds with less symptoms. This is why some vaccines, for example, Johnson & Johnson vaccine says we predominantly activate T helper 1 pathway. JLB says the five mechanisms of ivermectin are done by straight ivermectin or subproducts of ivermectin passing through liver. Straight. So ivermectin molecule itself, after it's passes and everything, the active form does that. 
So if it is an active form given directly nebulized or in the blood, then that would work. Anubhav says, my grandmother has runny nose, fever, and slight cough. Did a home rapid test on her because she was symptomatic. Did it on first day of symptoms, came negative. What are the chances of false negative? A lot. So do it again. And um, the way I have done for myself as well, that in during the pandemic, if you feel that the symptoms are off the pathogen, then just start managing it as if the infection is there. So uh, Jesus Christ says, not anti-ivermectin. I am pro-ivermectin, and I'm not saying you're anti-ivermectin, but I also understand microbiome. Okay, the gut is the whole of our immune system. Innate immune. No, that's not correct. So gut is not our whole of the innate arm. Our innate arm is made up of macrophages, neutrophils, dendritic cells, natural killer cells and proteins released by the liver that include complement system that includes acute phase reactants that whole system is present throughout our body our gut has it as well and we call it malt and that is sorry galt gut associated lymphatic tissue and the the cells in there but we have this all over the body so no gut is not the only innate arm Niaz Beck says, hi, Dr. Bean, love your work. Thank you so much for giving up so much of your valuable time to educate us. You are very welcome, and we would continue to do, to do that. So um, OK to let go says, is chronic myelomonocytic leukemia managed with hydroxyurea, 500 milligram A, weakened immune system. Look, leukemias uh, or the white blood cell cancers, when they are managed, what we are trying to do is that we are trying to bring the cells back into balance. So if we are bringing them back into balance, we are not actually saying, we are saying, hey, don't be in extra numbers, be in normal numbers. Then we should be fine. But if we are trying to kill off the, the cells to do a pulse of suppression and then allow the rebound to occur, then we would have, during that time, lesser of the immune system. So this is a discussion to have with your doctor to see what are they exactly doing. Um, is it ethical for Dr. Fauci to hold mRNA patents for Moderna that were researched and developed with U.S. taxpayer money? I don't know. I think so. This is more of a bureaucracy question that is he in a um, position from his job point of view that he can make that decision. If he can, then unfortunately, we as a society have given him that job. And then he can decide what he wants to do with it, as he's been doing. So Son Dang Emilia says, we are seeing increase of Delta cases here in Indonesia. Even fully vaccinated people get the disease from mild to moderate severe cases. We have Sinovac vaccine here. What do you think? So see, without the data, it is very difficult to quantify that what will it mean? For example, I, I love UK from this point of view, that they don't there are rumors there, but still they put data out as well. So you can look at that data and make up your mind. For example, this UK report was said to show more deaths in vaccinated than unvaccinated. And that created an interesting rumor mill. But if you look at the data itself, you can then analyze it and say, OK, that's not the case. So similarly, 
without looking at the data, I have no idea how to respond to this. <laughs> is there a secret owl here? So plant kingdom say secret owl. What is the difference in the two? Same PPM, but so there is some somebody. Oh, here is the secret owl. Okay. <laughs> Bob Bissell says I would never take a vaccine in China. Um, AR Anonymous says, <laughs> "Hi, Doctor Bean. What do you think is the risk of developing long hauler after?" Long haul symptoms after taking three to five days for ivermectin. Uh, risk of developing long haul symptoms. Uh, so, okay, um, sorry, I, I was a little slow catching the question. So, are you saying that somebody who gets infected and now they are being treated with ivermectin, so three to five days, what is the risk of becoming long hauler? If that is a question, I think it's not about how many days. I think it is till they recover from the symptoms. I feel, or this is what I've done, that until the patient comes back and says, all good, <laughs> leave me alone, I continue to do the therapy. So because that is my experience, I cannot speak to the experience otherwise. Skyfrog says, I need to say my last dose of ivermectin in case of getting virus. Dr. Antonato is not responding to messages. Uh, talk with Dr. Heather. Talk with, I think on the FLCCC, there is one more doctor who actually does not even take a fee. They ask you for the voluntary fee and they recommend to, to donate $100. But if you don't want to or can't, you don't need to. So there are other doctors just have a good stash available. Um, Sharon Higgs says, Sharon Higgs, Dr. Bean, thank you for your daily lectures and education and COVID on so many interesting and vital topics. Delta variant has become more prominent in South Africa, infection rising daily. So let's look at South Africa. That's very interesting because South Africa has its own big, <laughs> big gun, and that is a South African variant. So let's see how is South Africa doing. Now if I can, I do not know if it is one word or it is written South-Africa, okay. So, oh wow, so the third wave now looks like receding. Wow, not receding, I guess. It is actually going downwards. Number of deaths are there too. Interestingly, if I go back up here, the wave size is all, so 18,000 versus 21, 22,000, and the death rate is actually lower. And that may be because more of the at-risk population got infected before. And so the newer population that is getting the infection is healthier. And because of that, death rate is lower. So with this, how about we uh, stop for today, this tomorrow morning, 9 a.m. Pacific time. We'll have Dr. Paul Merrick with us. So, uh, and he has sent me a few papers that I have to review before the talk tomorrow. So uh, I'll beg leave. So please do me a favor. Please like, subscribe, and share. And if you would like to support this work, there are three links in the description. If you like PayPal, you can use that to support this work or you can buy me a coffee which does not need PayPal, or you can be a patron. So with that, thank you very much, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Two, two interviews tomorrow.